What's up guys? Today I'm going to try to make another one of these. Well, hopefully it'll work out as planned. Because as you see, it's not filled out all the way. Um, last time I cast this was probably two years ago. I made another pattern but never did anything with it. So this one you can see I fed it into the top and I used the same type of foam for the entire thing. And that's polystyrene EPS, not XPS. So this time I made another pattern. And you can see it here, I used polystyrene EPS for the bottom and the extruded polystyrene for the sprue. So I didn't coat this with any plaster, I'm gonna cast it just as it is and it should come out with all those little beads that you see that make up the polystyrene EPS. So this video guys is actually a video following another cast. I just cast something. And I'm gonna give you a little glimpse of what I cast. And if you didn't see the video, definitely check out last week or the prior week's video of exactly what I cast right here. So let's get to the video. All right, so since I made this pattern a long time ago, I didn't film it. So this is a clip I pulled from my last video where it failed. This is how I made the square, by cutting out the polystyrene EPS foam using my hot wire cutter. I cut out a three inch square. Then I put a piece of wood behind the burner so I could easily press the foam up against it so it burns a groove into the foam. Doing it this way allows me to have a uniform groove all the way around. After this, I'll glue a sprue on it for the molten metal to flow into. And now it's time to bury it in dry sand for the lost foam casting process. Normally I coat it with a thin layer of drywall mud. That really helps out with the surface finish. And I really wish I did it in this case. So lost foam casting is super simple. All you have to do is take a piece of foam and bury it in a container with dry sand. Filling the container all the way to the top and vibrating it so you really get a good compaction of the sand surrounding the foam pattern. Fill it all the way to the top. And when it reaches the top, you want to take a can with the hole cut out of the bottom so you can put that right over top of the foam. This is where the molten metal is going to be poured into. And make sure to surround the container with more sand just to lock it into place. You really don't want to be pouring molten metal into the can and then have the can fall over. And now it's time to melt some metal. I'm going to start off today's melt melting down some scrap aluminum that I have. Mainly cutoffs from previous lost foam castings. If you're new to my channel, definitely head back into my other videos when you finish this one. I'm sure you'll find plenty other videos that you'll enjoy. So let's get back to melting some metal. Now that I have enough aluminum to cast, I'm going to remove the slag from the top of the molten metal out of the crucible. I always do this before pouring. And this is where the magic happens. You pour the molten metal into the mold you previously made and it vaporizes the foam and takes its shape. 
it really is fascinating. It's a super simple way to really get into learning how to metal cast. It's now been about 15 or 20 minutes and it's now time to remove this from the sand. It is still very hot, so do not touch this with your bare hands. Even with gloves, make sure you use some sort of utensil to grab the can to pull it out of the sand. I'm going to now cool it off in a five gallon bucket of water. It's now the following day and it's completely dried from the water and it's now time to cut off the sprue or the part where the molten metal flowed into the part. And I think it looks really good. But like I said in the beginning, I should have coated this with some drywall mud because I have a lot of cleaning to do. So after removing all of the black tarnish from the aluminum, I'm really getting a better look at it. Now the polystyrene EPS to begin with was not smooth, so even if I did add that drywall mud, it would still need a lot of grinding. So I started off to really try to get it smooth with 40 grit grinding wheel, and it was a lot of grinding. I started out at 40 and went all the way to 400 grit, and yes, hours later. And now it's time to spray it down and do some wet sanding with 1000 grit sandpaper to try to get a better shine because I wasn't really getting a good shine out of the 400. And to do one even better, I added some mag aluminum polish to it and buffed it to make it look even better. And using that buffing wheel really made it stand out. I really like how this looks. I'm so happy that it came out as a full cube, unlike my last one. So let's put this on the scale and see what it weighs. That's right guys, 39.1 ounces and 2.44 pounds.